Hello everyone. Today I am going to demonstrate clinographic projection of the tetrahexahedron. Today I am going to <coughs> demonstrate clinographic projection of the tetrahexahedron. I also made video regarding the how you can make these crystal models using cardboards. In first video, if you have missed it, go and watch the making of the 3D models using cardboards. Okay, but during the first video, after making this crystal, I realized that it was not perfect one. Okay, so because these apex are too high in comparison to these points okay and uh, the stiffness of the inclines of uh, the triangular faces is also high which is not similar to the wooden model of the crystals so it is the tetrahexahedron okay you can count faces and each and everything i'm going to till zoom out this thing so this is also belonging to the isometric system and uh, normal class okay so it will show the symmetry as so shown by the cube or octahedron so i will discuss the symmetry element later tetrahexahedron is consist of the how many faces you can count 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 triangular faces in each 6 such type of squares. Okay, so 4 multiplied by 6, 24 faces. So tetrahexahedron is made up of 24 iso is isoscale triangular faces. Okay, and each face cuts the crystallographic axis two crystallographic ax axis at different length and parallel to the third one okay so the general miller indices of this tetrahexahedron is hk0 because one axis is parallel to the one axis and unit symbol is 210 so you will get in this model part 9 planes and 13 symmetry element, axis of symmetry so first i am going to discuss the axis of symmetry like this one okay so this one is top to bottom this one is front to back front to back is not visible to you front to back and this one is left to right left to right front left and right okay so when we will rotate along these axis, the axis, you will get fourfold. Like all three axes will give you fourfold symmetry. Okay. Now hold the same crystal model from these effects. Then you will hold the point which is made up by the joining of the four triangular faces. One, two, three, four. This triangular faces. This is the crystallographic axis passing from this point. What will pass? Crystallographic axis. So just search the another uh, bike to it. So, like I hold it is top one and just this opposite is bike one, bottom one. Okay. So the A3 axis will pass through these points. But when you will get one, two, three, four, five, six six face triangular faces will join at a point how many six then and this will give you threefold symmetry okay. total four uh, axis which will show the threefold rotation how these are made up just hold from the crystallographic axis basically these are the corner point of the what cube from here Q also show the how many threefold symmetry same it is also showing the from that point 
थ्री फोल्ड सिमेट्री फॉर टू फोल्ड सिमेट्री यू हैव टू होल्ड लाइक दिस मीन्स टू ट्राइंगुलर फेसेस आर ज्वाइनिंग एंड मिड पॉइंट ऑफ दैट ओके अलॉन्ग द लाइन वेयर टू फेसेस आर ज्वाइनिंग वन फेस एंड टू फेस एंड मिड पॉइंट आर जस्ट होल्ड फ्रॉम द अपोजिट वन सो वेन यू विल रोटेट इट यू विल गेट द टू फोल्ड सिमेट्री सो सच काइंड ऑफ द सिक्स एक्सिस आर देयर विच विल शो द सिक्स टू फोल्ड सिमेट्री सो टोटल इज थर्टीन now the plane of symmetry so likewise cube you can cut like this 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 and this this will give the four diagonal x mirror planes and two from this sides you can get so total six and three axial one two and three so total number of mirror planes will be 9 center of symmetry is also present i am going to demonstrate the clinographic projection of the tetrahedron tetrahedron okay so first you need to draw the axis of the cubic system so if uh, you do not know how to draw it uh, any information like how this what is the angle between the axis and what is the ratio of these lines so you go youtube channel you go to my youtube channel and uh, watch video preparation and drawing of the cubic axis and for to determine the angle and ratio of the axis you need to watch the another video the clinographic projection of the isometric system okay so now i am starting with here only first draw the axis of the cubic system then you need to rename the end points of the cubic system uh, these axes this is the a1 axis this is a2 axis and this is a3 so this end will term as the positive a1 and this will be term as the negative a1 and this will uh, is the positive a2 and this is the um, negative a2 this is positive a1 and this end is negative uh, positive a3 and this end is negative a3 so saying it many times positive and negative i think it is better to give some name so i am going to give the a1 axis as ab and uh, A2 axis as CD, C means positive and D means negative end, and EF means this one is the positive O A3 and this end is the negative A3. We have the axis and end points. We rename it. Now we are going to mark the half of the midpoint of the OC. The OC is the origin, yeah, center point of the. cubic system so next in next step we have to determine the midpoint of the from center to the face of center to the edge of the axis you can say so midpoint of the oc so to do uh, do not determine it uh, by the scale okay so you have to determine it midpoint using the compass only so i am going to demonstrate how you you can determine the midpoint using the compass okay take the compass mark the arc length more than the half of the oc okay then draw two arcs at the upper part and lower part these are the two arcs in upper and lower part put compass needle at c and mark the two another arcs of the same length from this uh, upper portion and lower portion again yeah we can say the both side of the oc now join these two intersection points so you will get the 
intersection point of this new line with the OC. This intersection point is midpoint of the OC and also this line is perpendicular to the OC. So it is also called as the perpendicular bisector of the OC because it divides OC in two. I marked midpoint here and named it as I. Okay, midpoint is so now you only midpoint of OC is visible and this midpoint is given as point I. Okay, now determine the midpoints of the other uh, half of the axis are uh, OC, OE, o, OA, OB. The point, midpoint of OB is G, midpoint of uh, OE, G, OB is H like. So, other points are midpoints are this. So, you can see the midpoint of OEG, midpoint of OB is H, midpoint of OC is I, midpoint of OD is J, midpoint of uh, OE is K, and midpoint of OF is L. Now, next step is very simple. So, in next step, what we will do? We are going to join from the in next step, we have to join the mid prime, midpoint from the edge and we will join only midpoint of A1, A2 from A1 to A2 and A1 to A3 same as the edges of A1 and A2 uh, and A1 and A3 only. We are not going to join A3 and A2, any kind, no, neither is another uh, midpoint, okay. So, let, suppose E3 is, uh, E is midpoint of A3, so join E from the G midpoint of OA, okay. And join the in point of A1 positive that is A with the midpoint of the K then you will get an intersection point. So we need to such uh, four intersection point. So do for the negative end also. These are the four points one, two, three and four. Okay, so here we used only the positive end of the A1. So these are the front faces. Okay, midpoint of front faces. Yeah, midpoint of the front. Okay, now these points are P, Q, R and S name it P, Q, R and S. These are the intersection of the when positive end or positive negative end ends to midpoint, midpoint to end, then we will get the intersection point. Okay, it is clear. Now draw the same things for the negative end. So we get another four points, one here, second, third one and fourth one. So name it again also. So, so this is the naming of T, U, V and W. These are the intersection point of the lines from the back side of the A1 and A2 positive and negative ends. Okay, so here we get four front and four bike points. Now here is one uh, trick point. Remember, 
if suppose r i am going to consider r point point r is the intersection point of the ak and ea means from the two axes are involved for this intersection that is a3 axis and a1 axis so draw a line passing through the r and parallel to the third one that is a2 axis because this intersection point is derived from the by using a1 and a3 similarly this point q is derived by using axis a1 and a2 so line will be parallel to a3 again here this is the derived using a1 and a3 line will be parallel to a2 this one is derived uh, point p is derived using uh, a1 and a2 line will be parallel to a3 so this is the uh, square you can see the faces look like the square and you get four intersection point again because it is square so square has four corners this is equivalent to the you can see it okay i will zoom it this face these corner are these intersection points okay these corners earlier i told how many symmetry you get from these points three full symmetry that points are you are deriving using the drawing a parallel line to axis which is not used to determine the intersection point so name these points so this is the p1 point this one is p2 point this one is p3 and this one is p4 p3 and p4 so four points are derived so similarly for the white face again four points passing through the respective t t is the uh, by a2 and a1 and a3 so line parallel to a2 this line is u from u passing through the u it is parallel to a3 and uh, mid, uh, derived using a1 and a2 so again four points are derived through the bikings so name it p1 p2 p3 p4 so to make the face so you can imagine this is the face which is equivalent to what q 0 1 0 0 face okay like if you join this like this you will get left side that that is 0 1 0 now i am going to remove these lines i will keep only the intersection points so now these are the four front points okay and join these four points with the this point g for g it is the just join i will tell what is the point g okay so join it so you get four faces if you join these points pf1 g and pf4 will give one face P, uh, p3 p4 and g will give th uh, second one likewise there is four faces and these faces are the iso scale triangular faces okay likewise you can rather join the p uh, p1 to bp1 and p4 to bp4 and p uh, pb1 and pb4 then you will get a face square shape face here and again join the with i okay let's do it so these are the four faces one face two face three face and third one shown by the dotted line because it is the bike face of the tetrahedron right one is this one is right only one face is visible here and these three are 
बाइक टॉप ओके दिस वन फोर फेसेस वन टू थ्री एंड दिस वन इन मेक्स द फोर्थ वन अगेन फ्रॉम द बॉटम ओके नाउ यू गेट द स्क्वायर ओनली यू हैव टू ज्वाइन दिस फोर पॉइंट्स बाइक पॉइंट्स विद द एच यू विल गेट द four faces of the bikes so this is a so you have drawn a beautiful tetrahexahedron okay you can count the faces all 24 faces and i told you earlier i will tell you what are these i j and g e h points so these are the axis of the crystallograph uh, end points of the crystallographic axis this red line showing the crystallographic axis and black solid line showing the front faces of the tetrahexahedron and uh, these uh, dotted lines are showing the uh, bike face of the tetrahexahedron now i am going to give some color to these uh, faces now for the front these are the front faces so you can visualize you can uh, determine by this like this this is a press this will be, uh, this is a uh, one face like this one this one so this one triangular so all faces are triangular do not count like this okay so you can count let us start counting one only see the color 1 and 13 now count start dotting uh, shown by the dot the, the, that is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 Seven. One each year. Eight, nine, ten, and eleven. So thirteen plus eleven is twenty-four. Now regarding the Miller indices. Now regarding the Miller indices. Okay. So this is the A one positive. G is showing the A one positive end. now this line parallel to what if you remember i am going to draw this is the parallel to the a2 this edge is parallel to the a2 so this face never intersect axis a2 because this face is parallel to the a2 and likewise this face g P F one and P four. This is parallel to A three, but and this will intercept what A one at unit distance, but it to somehow at at this point. So this phase will have symbol that is unit symbol of this phase will be two one zero. Why? Because if you going to write the V symbol, then one by because uh, it intercept uh, even axis as unit distance, then it will be one by one. Then uh, a two axis at twice, so one by two, and parallel to a three, so one by infinite. So when we Miller indices equivalent will be multiply by two, two one zero. Okay. Similarly, this phase will have two zero one because this phase is parallel to A two. This one is two one bar zero. This phase again two zero one bar because it is parallel to uh, A two and passing cutting a negative end up with the A three. so like this is the uh, clinographic projection of the 
tetrahexahedron and this is the cardboard model of the same thank you for watching